Good morning, grade fours, and welcome to Natural Science. So, what on earth am I doing here? What is going on? So, I thought I would get dressed up for you today for a very special occasion. So, I know that somewhere in this country, whoever is watching, it is somebody's birthday today or it was their birthday yesterday or it's your birthday tomorrow i know that if you are watching and it is your birthday today we are celebrating you because i want you to know how special you are i'm 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 ready to celebrate you i'm ready to celebrate your birthday and i'm ready for us to just have fun so before we begin this lesson i am going to start off with a happy birthday song from me to you and i'm really going to show you sound energy in practice so <laughs> this is the <laughs> first time and probably the last time you'll hear my beautiful voice so are you ready one two three happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear boys and girls Happy birthday to you. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Hooray. Noch a pip. Hooray. I want to wish you a very, very happy birthday. Those that it, it's your birthday or it's just past. I just wanted to do something special for all of you to know, for you to know how just amazing you are you're learning, you're alive, it's your birthday, you're another year older, and so you are loved, you are special, I'm thinking about all of you and your birthdays today, and just as how silly I am, and how silly I look, I just hope that you have the silliest day, and you just have the happiest day, and you have belly laughs, and you eat lots of cake, and you just know how wonderful you are, so just from me to you, a very happy, happy birthday. Right, so that's how I wanted to start our lesson off today. Something different, something fun, but I'm gonna take this all off because it can get a little bit distracting. There we go. Back to my old self, boring self. Okay, and let's get started with today's lesson. Right, let me change my view. Okay, so boys and girls, remember that if you've got any questions with regards to our sound today, email them at to grade four at worksheetcloud.com. Okay, especially for all of you birthday boys and girls out there. Right, so let's have a look at what we are doing today. Before we do something um, and we learn more about sound, remember uh, the last lesson, I spoke to you about an interesting fact, like something really cool, something new to learn. So I'm gonna again start this off and I didn't know this at all. I, I also seem to learn something new every all the time. And when I read up about this, so for those of you that have been watching and following these lessons, I'm sure you've realized by now that I get the heebie-jeebies when it comes to spiders. I really do. I'm scared of spiders, even in my youth. <laughs> I don't want to say old age, so I'm going to say in my youth. And so I'm not too fond of spiders, but when I read about this, I thought it was super cool. Okay, so did you know that many types of spiders eat their webs at the end of the day? Did you know that? So when a spider spins its web, it actually eats it at the end of the day. Now, you're probably asking why. Why on earth does a spider do that? So did you know that a spider's silk contains a lot of protein? So it is more efficient for the spider to eat it and reuse that protein than to simply leave the web to fall apart. So very cool, hey? So a spider will eat its web to get all of that protein. So here's something also that's very interesting. This would give me nightmares, but look at this. A giant web found in a park in Texas measured over a hundred meters across and was made by many, many spiders working next to each other. Look at these webs. It just, it's 
it's incredible scary and gross for, for me maybe some of you that you you like your spiders that's okay you might but this it's very interesting so nature is phenomenal but like look at this picture how cool is this so the next time you see a web however it looks because you get different types of webs based on the species of spider however it looks i want you to know that that at the end of the day the spider some some most spiders actually eat their own webs to get that protein and then they'll spin a new web again very cool hey see learn something new every single day right so today's science lesson we are actually going to be having some fun we're going to be making sounds and we're going to be exploring different types of sounds because as you know we've been um learning all about energy different types of energy and then we focused a little bit more on sound energy looking at musical instruments how sound is made uh, and how the vibrations of sound cause or vibrations cause sound and vice versa sound can also cause vibrations okay so today i thought we could just have some fun and just learn about different sounds and it's again i'm gonna say and recommend do this at home um so that's exactly what we're going to do okay so as i've got three types of activities that i'm going to do so i'm actually going to change my screen i'm going to do the activities and then i'm actually going to go through the presentation with you right so back to me so the first thing that i'm going to do is use an ordinary elastic band so i'm sure a lot of you have got elastic bands lying around at home and i want you to try this on your own okay so i it would be cool if you can have two people holding the the elastic band so i don't have a, a an assistant or a partner so i'm just going to put it between my two fingers as wide as possible right so all of you can see it like this you're going to need to listen very carefully to what i'm going to do Right, so if I take this elastic band and I pull very hard, okay, I don't know if you can hear, very hard, so I'm pulling it very hard. I want you to listen to that sound compared to if I, again, hard and softer. What is the difference in the sound? What do you hear? What is different based on if I'm pulling the elastic hard compared to if I'm just plucking it or pulling it a little bit softer? Okay, so do you notice and do you hear that the moment that I pull the elastic hard, it produces a loud sound. The moment that I pull it softly, it produces a soft sound. Okay, now what happens if I have the elastic very tight compared to if I loosen it up a, a little bit? Okay, so I'm going to start off loose and then I'm going to tighten it and I want you to listen to the difference of sounds to when an elastic is tight and when it is loose. So this at the moment you can see it's a little bit loose and I'm going to pull. Okay, now I'm going to tighten it again. Right, I want you to think now about the word pitch. What I am trying to, what I want you to listen to is that the moment that the elastic is, is tight and it would work a little bit better if it was pulled, right? And it is really tight. So the moment that your elastic is really tight, okay, and I pull the elastic, there is a higher pitch right doesn't matter if i pull it hard or soft but if we just talk about pitch right now there is a much higher pitch compared to if i loosen the elastic so it is nice and loose and i pull it there is a lower pitch right so do you see that pitch can be determined with how loose or how tight the elastic is or, and it can be any subject, uh, any substance. So the moment, um, like in a guitar, your certain strings are tighter and certain strings are looser. Why? Because it does affect the pitch. Um, as well as if you pluck something very hard, it's going to produce a loud sound compared to if you gently pluck it, it'll produce a softer sound. So do you see that sounds can also be affected by the volume as well as the pitch? Okay, so that is just to show you volume and pitch using a plain old elastic band, right? The next thing that I want to show you 
is by using bottles. And I'm sure that you have seen that if you fill bottles, and I've got two bottles over here that I'm going to show you. Right, I've got bottles that are exactly the same size. Um, so you can see my bottles, right? And so in these bottles, I filled them with water and the water, the one bottle, the water line is about over here. Okay, and the other bottle, the water line is much lower. All right, now what we're going to do with the water, so both bottles, the volume of water is different. The one bottle, there is a higher volume of water and my second bottle, this bottle, the volume, I've only got a little bit of water and I want us to see how does the volume of water affect the sound, right? So let's see. So I'm going to blow into both and I want you to listen very carefully to see what you hear. Are you ready? Okay, this is the bottle that there is a little bit of water. Okay, listen. This has got lots of water. Do you hear the difference in sound? So boys and girls, do you see that the less volume of water I've actually got in my bottle compared to the higher volume of water, it actually changes the pitch. So the less water, I've got quite a deep low pitch compared to a very higher pitch. So the moment I've got a bottle where I've got a high pitch. And I want you to try this. If you've got bottles that are the same size, grab a few different bottles and fill them up with water of different heights and blow. Maybe you can play a little, um, a little song. So let's see what I can come up with. Music uh, is clearly not my forte. I'm sure a lot of you <laughs> are more talented in this area than what I am. So I want you to try it. Okay, so that is bottles. The other thing that I want to show is if I have bottles and I just tap it. So I've just got a pen and I'm going to tap it. So here, this bottle, you can see I've got a lot of water. Now I want you to listen to the sound that if I have to tap the bottle, what it sounds like. Compared to if I have a bottle that is only got a little bit of water and I tap it, what does it sound like? Can you hear the difference? <laughs> so, boys and girls, you can be as creative as you want um, at home, get bottles. Um, some elastic bands and I want you to try these all these different sounds with volume play around with it with your volume and your pitch so did you notice that as I was tapping the bottle the bottle with the least amount of water in it produced it changes the volume compared to lots of water lots of water there's a high volume and the least amount of water very low volume so volume is also um, can be changed depending on the amount of water or substance within a particular object so how interesting is that so the third thing that i want to actually show you is i've got an ordinary piece of cardboard that you can try at home and i'm going to make a megaphone so what a megaphone is if i twist it which i'm sure some of you would know where one side the opening is much bigger and wider compared to the other side. Right. Now, what happens if I talk through this, my homemade megaphone? Let's see. <coughs> Hello. What happened? Do you hear how loud it gets? And I bet you... And I want you to try this. So maybe make your own megaphone at home. 
Go to your neighbors and see if you can have a conversation with your neighbor and see if they can hear you. Hakuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop right there. Okay, so what we have over here with this particular megaphone, and we have megaphones that um, specifically for sound, because why they're so important is that sound is firstly much louder, so it can be heard, uh, f you know, very, it's very, very loud, as well as the sound travels uh, further distances, right? And so we use megaphones, They we can either make our own megaphones, or we get electronic megaphones, but the concept of a megaphone is quite interesting because the sound, so what actually happens is that the sound, the sound waves that travels through the megaphone, it actually starts to bounce off the walls. And as it's bouncing off, it's reflected and it starts to echo. And then that echo then travels. And remember sound, when it travels in the air, Okay, remember it travels in a medium, so in this case the sound is traveling through air, the particles, they bump against each other and they vibrate and that sound becomes is loud, that sound travels quite far and that is just by using a good old megaphone. Boom! Okay, so those are the three things that I just wanted to talk about today and have fun with it. So I'm going to go back to our presentation to just show you um how what it's all about what we can learn from our different our three different activities so remember i plucked my um i plucked my elastic and remember that m movement causes vibration that causes sound different types of movement cause different sounds right so with this particular activity what did we learn we learned that when the elastic is pulled hard we get a very loud sound we also learned that when it is pulled very gently we get a softer sound then we also learned that if the eye elastic is a little bit loose okay our pitch is much lower alternatively when our elastic is tight nice and tight we get a very higher pitch okay right so sounds remember boys and girls especially softer sounds they are always caused by small vibrations loud sounds are caused by big vibrations if we have high sounds they cause they're made by very fast vibrations okay and if we have very low sounds it is made by very slow vibrations so if we talk about volume and pitch, it's either the vibrations are small, they're big, they're fast, or they're slow. Okay. Then our second activity, I filled up different bottles. Oh, I filled up my, I only have two here. Um, I have to make do in lockdown. And so if you've got bottles at home, fill them up with different levels of water. Blow on your bottles and hear the different sound and, and what the type of sound that comes out of it. The height of the water in the bottle, remember, changes the pitch that the sound is made. When you tap the bottle gently or hard, you change the volume of the sound, right? So the water affects the pitch and the water also affects the volume. Okay, it all depends on how you're going to use the bottle to get that sort of sound out of the bottle. Right, then the third activity, I made my trusty megaphone, which is now unraveled, but that's okay. And I blew and you all probably are scarred for life with my rendition of Hakuna Matata. And what did we learn by that with our megaphone? So megaphones are awesome and they're important because sound can get louder and it can travel further with a megaphone. The walls of the hollow shape it also vibrates as the sound starts to echo within a megaphone and this makes the sound seem much much louder right so unfortunately that's the end of our lesson i had lots of fun today and boys and girls remember I want you to have fun. Science is so much fun. And if you've got bottles lying around, if you've got elastics, 
maybe make some music, have a little bit of a dance. And for those of you that it's your birthday, remember a very, very happy birthday from me to you. Have such a blessed day. And, and I hope that you just know how very, how important you are, how special you are, and just how pretty cool and awesome you are. Have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Hakuna Matata from me, Miss Kun. Be kind to one another.